In this video, we are going to build the list view that you see on your screen. It represents the breakdown of a football game. The timeline spans on the duration of the game. The cells represent one minute intervals. You have a combo box with possible actions that could happen during the play. Select an action and mark some cells in the calendar. An item that represents the selected action is created. We can change the group type of the schedule and see how actions have been performed by players. We will build this application using the scheduling library for JavaScript. We will start from scratch. We go to the web page of the scheduler and download the trial version. We extract the contents of the archive and we copy the scripts and themes folders. These are the folders that contain the scripts used by the library and a set of various beautiful styling themes. Let's copy those folders to a new folder in Projects, which we call Game Recorder. This will be the location of our application. We need two files, one JavaScript file for the code and one web page. Now that we have everything set up, we will open the folder in Visual Studio Code. Let's get back to our project folder. In the Themes subfolder, we have the CSS files of all appearance themes for the scheduler. We will use green to complement the color of football fields. Here is the folder with all scripts that represent the scheduling library. Not all of them are always necessary, but we will reference them all to make sure any feature that we need is readily available. And here is the initial code for our web page. We add a reference to the file with the green theme and then we add a reference to all script files. We also add a reference to the game recorder JavaScript file, which is still empty, of course. Now let's add the code that creates a div element for the calendar. It will take most of the page. The calendar library needs a div element to render itself onto. It is important that the div has an ID, so we can refer to it in code. Let's add the initial code for our scheduler so we can have something visible on our web page. We add a reference to the scheduling TypeScript file. IntelliSense recognizes it and provides API code completion options. We make a namespace mapping to the scheduling namespace and get the calendar div element. You remember that calendar is the ID of the HTML div. Let's look at the members of the calendar class from the online documentation. We have current view property. We will use it to set the view to list. The calendar supports six views and you change them with this property. We also need to call the render method in order to see the calendar. Now if everything is done well, we should be able to see our calendar in the browser. Here it is. It looks rather ugly. We are going to set the green theme for it. What a difference a theme makes. Let's look at the calendar members again. You see here we have a settings property for each view. List settings, month range settings, and more. We need to check the list settings members, because we are using the list view. 
we will use some of these properties to customize our list. We start with cell units, which specifies the time unit of a cell. In our case, this is a minute. Then we have a number of cells. We set this one to 180 because the average duration of a football game is between 2 and 3 hours. Visible cells specifies how many cells are visible in the view at the moment. Of course, you can scroll to the others. We don't want a header and we set the format to be hour and minute. Here is our list now. Let's make it start from 18 o'clock on the current date. This is when a football game could be scheduled to begin. And here it is. Let us add now some footballers. We will create them as resource instances, though you can choose to make them instances of the contact class. We add each resource to the resources collection of the calendar schedule. Note that each calendar has resources, items, tasks, etc. And it has a schedule property as well. The schedule also has resources, items, contacts, etc. Those of the calendar are used for filtering and grouping. Those in the schedule are used when appointments are created. Our schedule now does not render any footballers. The reason is that there are no resources in the resources collection of the calendar. Let's add all footballers from the schedule to the calendar. We also set the group type to be Group by Resources. And here they are. If you look at the group type enumeration, you will see there are lots of options. The name of the footballers are clipped. We need to fix our CSS styling to make the containing cells wider. We can easily browse the theme styles in the browser and get the names of those styles that regulate settings we want to change. Then we can edit the CSS file of the theme directly, or we can add the edited style in the web page. Now I will paste the CSS styles that we have used to customize the sample. As you can see, they are quite a lot. Let's check the style that expands the header. Here it is. We have set the wrap for the group header to be 150 pixels. 
the header has a flex basis of 161 pixels. You can look at the customizations in the source code and make more changes yourself. The calendar looks good now. Time to add the actions. They are instances of the task class. When we select cells from the schedule now, you can see that a form appears where we can edit the event data. This is convenient in general, but not necessary in our case. We want to create tasks only with mouse click or select. No need of forms and typing. Fortunately, this is possible by setting use forms to false. We will also increase the height of our items to make them easier to read. Now it's time to add our selection of football actions as a combo box to the web page. The user will be able to select an action and when a new task is created, its subject will be the selected action. Now, let's look at the events available for the calendar. They are quite a lot. We choose the selection end event. What we want is after we've made a selection, a new task to appear. So, selection end seems like a good fit. We will write an event handler method for this event. Let's call it handle selection end. Let's introduce a new global variable first, selected index. We will use it to store the index of the currently selected item from the combo box. We can handle the onChange event of the HTML select element and always keep a track of the new selection when the user makes a change. Now this is our event handler method. We create a new item instance, which is also what is created when you use the forms. The start and end time of the item can be taken from the event data. Let's check it. The event data is an instance of the selection event args class and provides the time data. We also get the task that corresponds to this action and we set its name as a subject to our item. We use the resource name as a tag. Finally, we add the item to the items collection of the schedule. Now, every time we make a selection, we see new item being created that renders the name of the task. Perfect. We want those to be different color though. For that to happen, we need to use the CSS class property of the item, which allows us to set a custom style for the item. We will define classes that are different in background color and assign them to the respective items for the respective actions. We add six CSS classes, for each type of action a different color of item style. Now if we change the action, we expect the item to have a different background. And it does. That's great. What we are left to do now is allow grouping the list view by action, not only by resource. We want to see all people who have scored, everyone who has shot, and so on. We will add two buttons next to the select control. 
the click event of the buttons is handled by a new method, group. The group method is called with a parameter, which tells us which group type should be active. In the method itself, we need to change the subject of the items according to the group type. Let's recall that when we created items, the item tag was the name of the resource for this item. We use this fact now to change the subject of the item. Let's see what we've done. We create a few different tasks. We press group by task and here it is. We can see now which tasks has been performed by which players. Our application seems to work fine. And this is the end of this video tutorial. Thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in MindFusion Developer Tools.